Okay. Gentlemen, we need all of you right here, right Sir. now. Everything is okay. We're ready to go. Shoot your laser. We're going to recreate the, the shooting scenario, uh, as many various scenarios as possible, and using laser technology to establish the lines of trajectory. I would like to determine one more favorable or one that seems to fit better to achieve this test. We had to compile a team of recognized experts. The, the team was comprised of our laser expert, Mr. Heinz Thamal, Dr. Vincent DiMaio, who has an impeccable reputation as a forensic pathologist, Mr. Robert Groden, who is a photographic expert and has done a great deal of research in the uh, John F. Kennedy assassination. And Mr. Ronald Singer, who is a criminalist and uh, will is certainly has a great deal of expertise in crime scene reconstruction and uh, in, in the area of criminalistics. Yeah, I see the beam. I see the beam in the shadow. I see it in the shadow. I have uh, constructed and developed special lasers for this task. Some lasers were done in such a manner that we can determine the trajectory of the bullet to locate the point where the, where the bullet would, uh, would originate and terminate for that matter. And uh, the reason why is because the laser generates a very straight line and a very powerful line, so you, it can be measured over long distances. Yes. Okay, Larry, car is moving. Larry, take okay. that thing back up, because they're going to work on this one. You're going to stay on the same side you are. Good, good, very good. Perfect, perfect. You're right over the edge. Good. We used our surveyors to then spot the vehicles in three different positions, uh, one being a position uh, that was prior to the first strike. The second position being that position that was uh, where the president was shot uh, the first time. And the third position being that location where the president was shot the second time. When we, when we used our surveyors to place the vehicle in the, in the correct location, we, we did that independent of the published figures by the Warren Commission and by the FBI report. But let's look at the location of the vehicle and then let's look at this. Let's put a shooter up here. Yeah, yeah. And now let's run that line of trajectory. Yeah, with the laser. And that's what we're going to Initially, we started out trying to use the information from the government. And a lot of people think just because we have a lot of numbers, that's sufficient, but it's very hard to retrace that. And so the only thing we had that was reliable were the photographs from the Zapruder film. So we set up in the same position that Mr. Zapruder was in, set up our transit in that location, and using existing uh, landmarks in those frames, we're able to line up our transit and therefore relocate the car. Okay, uh, you have to come up. There's like a black spot right in the center. Yeah, right there. Go back the other way, a little bit to the other way now. Go uh, left. Whoa. Go uh, right, right there. Straight. Good. How's that look for the body position now? And our areas are aligned with the government's areas to the inch. And you can't get more accurate than that. Nor can you become more confident in what was done originally. By the, by the government employees some 35 years ago. Now, right where you are right now, Salvador, you can look right down at the limb that we want to try to pull over to the north side. There's two limbs that go like this, and the bulk of those limbs covers the window. I mean, that's where the, that's where the coverage is. So they're gonna to try to separate them like this first. If that doesn't work, then they're gonna take this limb off.
if we could get some uh, uh, more critical views from the Zapruder films. Uh, I'd like to test some of the other theories, uh, other locations, uh, and see uh, exactly what we can eliminate. And I think that's really the way you need to go with any kind of study like this, is that you eliminate the, the fringe theories. And the more theories you eliminate, the closer you come to the actual truth. It's like Sherlock Holmes said, once you've eliminated all of the impossible, all that's left is the truth. The bullet will usually flip and travel backwards, you know, with the base falling uh, after a certain well, that's point. That's pretty much arbitrary. But I'm not no, no, no that is wound ballistics. One, this is wound. Any photograph showing the bullet impacting him. And he would not even, no, he would not even realize. Assume a forward motion and a rearward motion behind the fence because the picture. No. What we're saying is, is that when you take out into account the trajectory, you take into account the wounds, this is in all medical probability, in all reasonable scientific probability, the way the bullet traveled and what it did. Now you can say, well, is this possible? Is that possible? He could have been shot by somebody hanging from underneath a flying saucer with a ray gun. Yeah, that's possible. I think what I want to do is uh, just present uh, what the objective evidence is in this case. Uh, uh, to eliminate some of the mythology about the nature of the wounds and the weapons, and then let people make up their own mind. Uh, I'm interested essentially in the scientific aspect of the case. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at it light up. We finally got it. And, uh, of course, we, uh, there's a little give and take as to where the entrance is. But of course, again, because the wound wasn't located exactly as to right or left of the midline at the time of the autopsy, it's just a rough approximation. We're running out of time. I don't want to run out of time. We're running out of time. Yeah, I see the beam. I see the beam in the shadow. I see it in the shadow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at it light up. Currently on action. Give me six more inches. It's just about right on. There oh, it is. Right. That's the second floor of the Dell Tex building. One of the most significant things that we were able to do with this testing is to find that there is additional confirmation for a suspected firing point that has been suspect now for uh, well over 30 years. And that is the second floor of the Dow Tex building. If we look at the line of trajectory, uh, where the uh, president has been shot, three degrees of rotation puts that shot in perfect alignment with the sixth floor school book depository room. Three degrees out puts that projectile in the second floor area of Daltex building. Unfortunately, there is no hard evidence or tangible proof that there was ever a shooter located in that second floor area. So if we go back to the physical evidence, everything points to the sixth floor as being the location of the shooter. Just drift a little bit, that's it, that's it, come on over, drift a little over. The team had uh, come to the opinion that the shot originated from the back of the president. And uh, that was based on the, uh, the blood splatter, on the eruption of, of the uh, spray of blood, and on the examination of the remaining portions of the skull. This is consistent with an exit because you've got a high velocity missile. The only type bullet that will produce so extensive a network of fractures in the skull is a bullet traveling at a very high velocity, okay? A rifle bullet, essentially. So when it comes in, it makes a, usually a relatively neat hole, and when it comes out, it produces a very large exit, especially if the wound is very superficial. Actually, if the wound is deeper, like from here to here, the exit wound is smaller because the force generated by the bullet going through the brain can be absorbed by the whole head. Here, it's kind of like just ripping off the top of the head. So when you see at the exit, you'll see blood and tissue ejected in a cloud, a very mist, uh, a mist-like cloud, pink in color, and this is vaporized blood. And, and the little droplets are all less than a millimeter, just 
tiny, and so you have a kind of cloud of blood. And this is what the motorcycle uh, riders later rode into. They rode into the cloud of blood. No, See, everything that we've come up with on our side of the argument for all these years, everything is, is being totally ignored here. No, everything. What, because no, what no, you're no, saying no. is that, that he's buckling at the instant that he's shot. That's not what happens in most people. Most people are shot in the, some yeah, passage yeah. of time, and then they react. But we're not talking about knowledge or reaction. We're talking about transfer of momentum. We're talking about the bullet striking him and making him buckle. No, well, I don't that, that's, that's make-believe. That's, right. that's that Arnold Schwarzenegger happen. pictures. If I took a body, hung it, from a, tr uh, from a line, straight. Took a 12-gauge shotgun loaded with 12-gauge slug, double O buck, and shot that body in the chest. It's not gonna move at all. Once it was determined that it was a, a back to front uh, shot, the trajectories were then plotted. And the trajectories went back to that sixth floor window, the school book depository. The idea of a hypothesis of more than one headshot has been around and, and uh, accepted by leading experts in, in the field of the assassination for decades. That is, that, that more than one bullet would have been used to, to cause as much damage in the president's head. And with all the witnesses in the plaza that were aware of shots coming from the front, it makes sense. Right now, uh, we have uh, Mr. Groden, who is setting up his line of trajectory uh, with an opinion that possibly the shooter or one of the shooters could have been located or could have been positioned on the grassy knoll. For the most part, uh, the grassy knoll was eliminated because it was in the incorrect position to establish any, any accurate lines of, of trajectory uh, to either of the, of the uh, victims of the shooting. And secondly, there was a, uh, there's a very large sign that would have prohibited a shooter from being located in a large portion of that grassy knoll. I don't, you know, I, again, I don't see it. I just, it, you, yeah. it okay. doesn't appear to me that that's... Do we have that other, other areas uh, that we want to uh, take a look at, other possible locations of shooters? There's one other. There are, there are others. Is you know what? Uh, uh, we're going to set up... Yeah, the, other one. the other one would be the one that has been hypothesized down at the corner where the... Sure. Fence sure. The, uh, cement. From that location, uh, you would have an ideal place for a shooter to be located. However, that would have meant that the windshield would have been shot out of the vehicle, and the trajectory was incorrect once again. And another uh, theory that was tested was the shot originating from the location of the storm drain. That location was quickly dismissed as the shot would have had to have been very, very quick there would have been no opportunity to, uh, to aim the firearm. Uh, the window of time was minimal. Uh, as a result, although the trajectory was OK, nothing else lined up for the team. And that, that theory was quickly dismissed. I think the first thing that I would say is that I'm very pleased with what we did. I, I actually got more out of it than I expected that we would when I first got involved in this. But I think the best thing that we did uh, was that uh, based on the, the laser trajectories that we shot from the Grassy Knoll area, as well as from the area of the overpass, uh, I think we plainly showed that with scientific, good, sound scientific evidence that uh, there couldn't have been a shot there that hit President Kennedy in the head. Based upon the testing we've done over the last couple of days, and uh, the autopsy and the photographs and x-rays, which I had a chance to look at. I would have to say our test is in agreement with the findings of the government. I find it fascinating that both of the um, laser tests that we did led back primarily and initially to the second floor of the Dow Tex building. Both of the shots came from there, and that spot has always been a suspected firing point going all the way back to 1964. Our mission was to establish the facts based on physical evidence. And when we based everything on the physical evidence, our location came back primarily to the sixth floor school book depository. This does not preclude the possibility of other shooters 
there could have been numerous shooters in that, in that area. The location was an ideal location for an ambush. However, there's just no evidence anywhere but that school book depository to base an opinion on. It's impossible to, for us as a team to base an opinion on conjecture. We must base an opinion on the physical evidence. And I am not suggesting that this was one person acting alone to assassinate the President of the United States. I am just suggesting that the evidence says that it was sources came from one location.